который летел первый, сбили. Второй на солнце где-то. Правее берите, правее. Волок летит. Есть! Since April 2024, Russians took control of more territories than Ukrainian counter-offensive last year. The American press comments on the progress of the Russian army on the battlefield. At the same time, American journalists are dejected by the fact that this progress not only virtually nullified the success of the Ukrainian army during last year's counter-offensive, but also makes the military assistance that Ukraine previously received from its allies completely meaningless. An article appeared in the Washington Post stating that just from the beginning of April 2024, the Russian army took control of more territories than the Ukrainian armed forces conquered during their 2023 counter-offensive. Thus, the Ukrainian armed forces even lost the town of Rabotino, designated by the Kyiv regime as the main success of the battles in the summer-autumn of last year. Let us recall that at the time the Ukrainian armed forces were planning to reach the borders of Crimea, but they were only able to reach Rabotino and also take control of several villages on the so-called Vremevsky Ledge. To date, Russian troops have taken control of more than 20 square kilometers of territory in the north of the Kharkov region, including the territory of the Kharkov region. At the same time, the Russian army is advancing in the area of the village of Liptsy and in Volchansk near Kharkov, southwest of Umansky and south of Chasovya, northwest of Verbovoy in the Zaporozhye region and in a number of other directions. The command of the Ukrainian armed forces is throwing reserves into battle and Zelensky claims that the Ukrainian troops have enough ammunition. The ongoing conflict in the Kharkiv region has prompted Ukraine to withdraw its troops from several villages along the border with soldiers relocating to safer positions in response to heavy fire from Russian forces. Moscow claims to have gained control over additional settlements in the Kharkiv region, including Lukyansky and Lybok and Robotyne in the southern Zaporizhia region. In New Caledonia, France uses violent methods and tries to continue its colonial policy. Hundreds of French police reinforcements have arrived in New Caledonia amid rioting that has left five people dead in the Pacific Ocean Territory. French High Commissioner Louis Lefranc said officers had been deployed to regain control of all the areas that we have lost. The unrest erupted this week after lawmakers in Paris voted to change electoral roles to allow more French residents to vote. Indigenous leaders say the move will dilute the political influence of the native people. Hundreds of people have been injured and about 200 people have been arrested so far. Ten independence activists accused of organizing violence have been placed under house arrest. New Caledonia has a population of about 300,000 people, of whom the indigenous Kanak people make up about 40% or 112,000 people. Under the 1998 Numia Accord, France agreed to give the territory more political autonomy and to limit voting in provincial and assembly elections to those who were residents then. More than 40,000 French nationals have moved to New Caledonia since. This week, the National Assembly in Paris proposed granting voting rights to French residents who have lived in the territory for 10 years. Because this requires a change to the constitution, the measure faces further hurdles. France has accused Azerbaijan of being behind protests. This isn't a fantasy, it's a reality, said the French interior minister Gérald Damanin to France 24, responding to a question about whether Azerbaijan, China and Russia are interfering in the situation in New Caledonia. He also expressed regret that some of the leaders in New Caledonia who advocate for independence have made agreements with Azerbaijan. However, Baku rejects Paris's accusations of interference in the affairs of New Caledonia. In response, Azerbaijani Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Aikan Hajizada said, We completely reject 
yet another claim by the Minister of the Interior of France, Gerard Damanin, against Azerbaijan and on alleged relations between Azerbaijan and New Caledonia's independence leaders in his interview with France 2. Moreover, instead of accusing Azerbaijan of allegedly supporting pro-independence protests in New Caledonia, the Minister of the Interior of France should focus on his country's failed policy towards the overseas territories that led to such protests. The Baku Initiative Group and 14 political movements fighting for independence in France's recent colonies, including Kanaki, Maui Nui, French Guiana, Martinique, Guadeloupe and Corsica, have issued a joint statement expressing support for New Caledonia. The statement reads, We, as the representatives of organizations from the last French colonies, Kanaki, Maui Nui, Guiana, Martinique, Guadeloupe and Corsica, along with the Baku Initiative Group, condemn the French authorities' forceful amendments in favor of expanding the electorate, which supporting Kanaki New Caledonia until its independence is an obligation under international law and supporting documents of international organizations, particularly UN Resolution 1514, concerning the right of peoples to self-determination. Therefore, all current demonstrations of the people of Kanaki and supporters of independence are legitimate. We call on France to stop its neo-colonial policy and ensure the people of Kanaki freedom to determine its own destiny. We also call on the international community not to turn a blind eye to this disgraceful neo-colonial practice that leads to the marginalization of the people of Kanaki. We call on the UN member states to raise the alarm with the UN Security Council so this esteemed institution can convene and condemn France's gross violation of international law. The statement says, 